Yo, what is up everyone? It's Josh again. I hope you are doing well and I'm glad to be back here with another video. Thanks for everyone who voted on the last community poll about which video I should be doing this weekend. And today we'll be doing the iPhone lightning connector. Um, so a little backstory. I was taking a road trip with my homies um, sometime last year. And before leaving, I was like, man, I lost my phone cable. What do I do? And I was like, huh, I got some parts around. Why don't I just make it myself? So I made this cable a year ago and it's been used in my car ever since and it's actually been holding up really well. I think with the TechFlex and the heat shrink, it actually makes a quite durable cable. I was expecting it not to be as durable but it ended up being something that I've been using ever since I made it. So I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these cables here today and I'm hoping that you can make something that you can be using for a long time as well. Uh, before we start off this video, make sure to leave a like if it's helpful at all sometime during the video, as well as make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in custom cable and mechanical keyboard stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and start building this cable. All right, so here's the lightning connector we'll be using today. It has four solder points and it's soldered similarly to how you would solder a USB micro connector. We also have a plastic shell in which it will fit in and we'll be needing some adhesive to keep this all together. So how it works is it just slides right into the shell. From there with some adhesive, it should stay in place, but this is what's gonna look like once it is put together. And this is the connector we'll be starting with and we can go on to making this cable. Making this cable won't be too much different than making other types of USB cables. But I'm going to start with my cable unsleeved here as I found it's easier to work with the shell uh, without a sleeving on it initially. So I'm going to go ahead and strip off the end of our cable here, which we'll be using to solder the connector onto. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and slide over the shell onto my cable and looks like it is in there well. All right, so here I'm gonna go ahead and set up the soldering for the lightning connector. I have my helping hands here and I'm gonna put the lightning connector on one side of the tool and I'm gonna have my cable on the other. Here I'm going to fan out before I put it onto the helping hands here, just a pattern that I'll be soldering it on. I, I do this for any other cable just to make sure that it's going to be the easiest as possible to solder this on. I'll have a diagram up on the screen if you want to reference the diagram that I'll be using to solder this connector here. All right, so I'm going to start off by tinning the wires first. Gonna get some bare wire as well as some solder on it to make it easier for myself to put this together. And then from there, I'm going to add some solder to the pads of the connector. Gotta make sure you have a clean tip, so um, that makes it easier to be a lot more precise because these uh, soldering pads are pretty thin. So you want to be pretty precise to make sure that you don't have any solder connecting multiple pads together. It's pretty easy though, um, just similar to like soldering a USB-C connector or USB micro. Just solder that out, make sure you have enough. I have noticed that if you don't add enough solder, it's pretty difficult to put these together. But here I am just adjusting the wire as well as the connector just to make sure I have a straight angle to solder my connector. Yeah, quick tip for anyone who's like new to cable making, especially like soldering at an angle usually leads to really bad results. So take the time to like make it straight so you, it's going to be a, a clean solder or else you're going to you're going to have to like redo it a few times or you might even burn some of your connectors. So. Just be careful with that. And I only leave just a little bit of the bare wire 
from the insulated wire because these connectors are pretty short. So you don't want to make sure you have not too much wire exposed or you're not going to have um, enough space for your connector to cover over it. Alright, so I have soldered on my USB lighting connector. So next off, I'm going to add the adhesive to the connector. I'm using JB Quick, uh, I forgot something weld, and basically what it is, it's a steel reinforced epoxy type thing. I did a lot of research in finding this, and I found out that this is one of the strongest things that can handle a high temperature, and uh, you're going to need that since I remember trying to make these cables with hot glue at first, but since they get pretty hot, uh, usually the, the hot glue melted, so I found this as a solution. It's still, in, it's still reinforced epoxy, but I found out that it's not conductive, so this will still be able to be used and your cable will still work. It comes in a black part, which is the steel type substance, and then the white part is the um, hardener. So once you mix this together, it's going to be able to um, be an adhesive for our connector here. The cure time for this is some sometime, I think it's like an hour or something, I could be wrong. Uh, but you have some time to work with it. So I'm going to spread it here with a Q-tip that I cut off the cotton part in. And I'm going to spread it generously across my lightning connector here. Get all of it on there, you know. Slather it on. Yeah. I, would, I do uh, try to get the notches at the top because that's um, one of the largest surface areas which it makes contact to the, the shell. So just make sure you have some good coverage with this uh, epoxy if you're going to use this. I'll also have a link below to all the um, items I'm using for this cable build here. So I'm going to slide it up, but if you slide it too far down, it's going to go inside the connector. So I just want it to line it up with the edge of my shell here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a paper towel and just clean it up, just to make sure that it's clean. Uh, since it, it's, since there's a cure time on it, it you have some um, time to make sure that you clean it all up before moving forward with the cable. Yeah, keep adjusting it while you still have time. Make sure it's straight. I always make some adjustments. Make sure um, it's gonna look good at the end. Get all the little notches, get all the edges. I don't know, I like spending a lot of time cleaning this up. Especially if you're going to use this for a long time, you might as well take the time to make sure it's done very cleanly. And make sure that's as even as possible. Alright, so next part, I'm going to go ahead and sleeve the cable. Um, this is pretty standard. I'm actually going to do a double sleeve here. So first off, I'm going to do a paracord. And then I'm going to cover the paracord with some TechFlex. So I left a little extra TechFlex at the end near the lightning connector. And I'm actually going to just tuck it inside of the connector. We should still have some clearance there. So I'm going to go ahead and just shove that excess tech flex inside. You can trim the tech flex to make sure that it is short enough to fit inside. But this is the way that I've found to get like the cleanest uh, fit into the connector. Because if you don't have all of the clearance taken up in the connector, you'll have some issues with bend later on as you continue to use it. And just in general, you know, cables, especially like phone cables and phone chargers, you know, people like to abuse them and, you know, throw them around and they just go a lot of places and it goes with you. So take the time to make sure that it's as secure as possible and to make sure that you have a well done job so you won't have to worry about it getting damaged in the future. And there we have our nice end there. So here I'm going to go ahead and solder on the USB-A side. So if you've seen any of my other videos, make sure to check them out. 
Um, I make keyboard cable videos most, most frequently. So if you're interested in that, check it out. I'll have a playlist around here. But here I'm just gonna strip off the shielding of my cable here. Get this off, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> but here we go. Taking it off there and then just clean it up, making sure everything's good. It's always good to double check to make sure that you don't have any like chips in your wire because sometimes when you um, strip it, you may uh, expose some wire you didn't want to expose. I always make sure to do a little fit check for each of my connectors just to make sure it's the right length and that my wires are all cut to the proper length in which the connector will fit onto my cable. So here I'm just going to go ahead and strip the wires knowing that I have the right length that I need. This makes it easier for me to tin it and solder it onto our connector here. So I'll go into our helping hands, have my connector on. I mean my cable on it. And then I'm gonna grab my USB connector and put it into place. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my soldering iron and my solder. I'm gonna go tin the wires first of my cable. And then I'm going to solder or add tin to the USB connector here. really simple um, probably like my favorite part of making cable is just the USB connector because it's probably the easiest thing to do and then again similar to what we did for the lightning connector just making sure that's lined up properly so that we have a clean and direct solder joint and make sure we have some good contact made here clean it up make sure that's proper and adjusted we have our solder here and looks pretty good. And typically I always grab like a little piece of black heat shrink. I have like this thin heat shrink that I use just to kind of cover it over just to, as another precaution to make sure that I prevent shorts in the future. There we have it. All right, so then I'm just, all right, so I'm gonna grab my USB-A connector housing and I'm gonna get ready to place that onto my connector that I just soldered on here. So this should just slide right in, just like that. And I give my thumb a little push just to make sure that it's in there all the way. Then we should have a little crimp part that we're gonna put over it here. And just slide in place. And it should fit very securely inside of there. Push it down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a pair of pliers and secure down this connector or the housing to the cable here. There we go. I try rounding it out just to make sure that it's secure, but also kind of symmetrical. Just to make sure it's kind of nice. All right, to finish things off here, I'm going to grab some black heat shrink and I'm going to heat shrink both the ends of my cable here. So for the USB-A side, I just, you know, you got it down, make sure not to add too much heat if you're using TechFlex or you might risk melting it. For the lightning connector, I am pretty careful. I do a few adjustments here just to make sure that um, it's going to be applied evenly. Um, especially with the plastic um, housing here, you want to make sure you don't add too much heat or you actually might melt into it and it might cause some deformation. But feel free to make adjustments and to make sure that you have nice coverage here. And it looks nice and makes a complete cable. And for the moment of truth, I'm gonna grab my cable and plug it into my phone to see if it works. Probably could have tested it out earlier, but whatever, you know, we like to have fun here. I plug it in, seems like we have a charge there and I am charging my phone right now as I'm editing this video. So it seems like it works and we have a working phone charger and also for data too. All right, so this is the finished cable here. I think it turned out really well. I think the colors look really good. This is actually a seafoam paracord with a monochrome tech flex here. So looks pretty good to me. But anyways, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like on this video, of course. Um, and also, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to check out my other videos if you haven't already. And also subscribe to the channel uh, to get notified of future uploads I have in the future. I have a lot of videos planned uh, for these upcoming months. So keep an eye out for all of those there. As well as keeping an, an eye out on the community tab, I'm probably going to do more polls in the future just to see what videos y'all want to see. 
And also the comments do really help me kind of guide me in the right direction of kind of making videos that y'all are interested in. But anyways, thanks again for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and make wise choices.